Two more minutes to go. All right, we are one minute until we start, so I'm going to wait a minute until everybody gets joined here to actually kick things off. It is 11.59, so I'm going to sit here and drink out of my Disney coffee cup. Until it's time to start. One more minute to go. All right, it is noon and welcome to the premiere broadcast of Nails Over Coffee. So this is a program specifically geared for nail, technici nail technicians. Um, we're going to have my daily dose of Java here with it. I'm a Disney junkie, as everybody will learn. And this today is my Minnie Mouse cup. We're drinking some uh, brewed French roast with French vanilla creamer. So we're gonna put my coffee aside for a second. Uh, so I'd like to welcome everybody who is joining in or is watching this later on. Uh, Periscope is a fairly new platform. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Periscope, the broadcast will be available for 24 hours uh, through Periscope. This episode I will probably also put up on my YouTube channel, which is Nail Girl 920 um, and so that way you guys can check it out later. Uh, I will be here. My name is Michelle Cordes Pugh. I am a nail tech of 19 years and I will be here uh, all weekdays, Monday through Friday at 12 noon Pacific time. I'm located in Tacoma, Washington and I am just a regular old nail tech like everybody else working in the salon um, with all the client stuff and all that entails. So I've got my handy dandy ding iPad here and um, so we're gonna start out with um, a bit of a welcome why I'm doing this I think that as nail techs we get a little tired of feeling like we're always being sold to we have some great industry mentors um, and that's fabulous but a lot of them have products they sell and they have things that they can and can't say um, which, you know, hey, I totally get it. I was a product manufacturer once myself, but I've always felt the need to be a little bit of a going rogue. And so I'm going to be working on doing whatever I can for education um, that doesn't have anything to do with me selling a product. So no offense to my product sales friends. Love you guys all. But... Um, I think that there is a need for education on the platform that doesn't have any sales behind it. Um, before I get started, I want to take a second to say that while this show is going to cover everything that's going on in social media uh, in the world of nails, I think that social media has been so dominated for the last couple of days because of recent world events that I would be remiss if I did not take a moment to um, send out thoughts and love to all the victims of all the bombing tragedies we had, not just Paris, but uh, Beirut, and we had some other natural disaster tragedies over the weekend, and there is a lot of victims and a lot of families. So I want to make sure that um, all of our nail tech brothers and sisters around the world who may have been affected by this, that uh, over here in the States, we are definitely thinking about you and behind all that. And also, I want to make a note about Jill Clark. Jill, you'll probably kill me when you see this, but for those of you who know Jill Clark in Michigan, she recently had a... Um, 
artery problem that and ended up with her being in the hospital for quite some time now. And it looks like her Coumadin level is finally coming up. So it looks like hopefully she'll be able to get to go home from the hospital soon. But in the meantime, if you go to her Facebook page um, and you're a Facebook friend of hers, there is a GoFundMe page to help her. She's going... She's taken quite a hit having to take a lot of time off of work. And as those of us who are self-employed nail techs understand that that can really be a huge difference, especially with the holidays coming up. So for those of you local in Michigan, there's a meal train going on for her also, uh, hopefully to cover the next couple of weeks when she might be home but won't be at 100%. And then there's also the GoFundMe page. So it looks like Jill might be going home from the hospital today. Yay! But um, she uh, is going to be on a, a bit of a road to recovery now. So I hope you get to go home today, Jill. This is my shout out for you. Um, okay, so more coffee here since this is, in fact, nails over coffee. Um, okay, so a recap of NTR last night. For those of you who don't listen to Nail Talk Radio, uh, my friends Athena and Brayden and Ellen, you need to be checking them out. It's Sunday nights, um, and in my time it's 7 p.m. I'm not sure what time it's actually listed on. You'd have to go check out on their website, nailtalkradio.com. Uh, but they are a weekly 90-minute Nail Talk Radio show. Uh, if you don't follow them, you really should. Every week uh, they have some great stuff, great giveaways, and... Uh, I will cover on Mondays a brief bit of what they covered on Sunday night, but to really get the full effect, you really need to listen to the show. So um, so to recap NTR last night, um, they went through a fantastic rundown of all of the nail shows for, that are coming up in 2016, starting with Long Beach in January, rolling right on through to just all of the nail tech events. Um Brayden, I wish you would really learn how to say Willamette. It's not that hard. I'm with you, Athena. Willamette, damn it. And Kristen, maybe you really should make that one of your slogans. I don't know. We joked about that last year. But um, went down an entire list of all the shows, Premiere and Chicago, all of the networking events. Guys, if you get a chance to go to a networking event in an area near you, please, please, please go. Um, where I'm at, the local, really affordable mini show networking event that we have is the Willamette Valley networking event. It takes place generally around April, May down in Oregon. Um, so if you're in the Northwest, please make sure, please get to your local um, please get to your local shows, wherever they might be. The networking event of the Smokies is great. Um, also, and I'll cover some of those other shows as we go through these little blips of um, what's going on in the social media world of nails today. Uh, also, on Nail Talk Radio last night, Ruben talked about the group Confessions of a Nail Tech. And if you belong to Confessions of a Nail Tech, it's a really well-run group that is basically that place that nail techs can go, that we can talk about things that we can only talk about with other nail techs. Um, so the topic that they d talked about was a problem with a client who called in because she needed a fix, she needed repair. And when she came in, she actually only had one nail left on because by her own admission, she had picked off the other nine. Now, I think that anybody who's a working nail tech has had this cross their table a time or two. Um, Ruben's recommendation, because she charged her for a full set and the client was really unhappy about that. And I think that Obviously, we have to charge what our, you know, I mean, that's our livelihood. We're not there for free. It's our profession. We're not a charity. But I think that this is part of that knowing how the business part runs. And there is definitely something that you can do that, that will make the client happy and also doesn't damage your business um, side of what you're doing quite as much. And and this wasn't really discussed, 
um, on NTR, but this is my little two cents worth. There's a, what you can do from an accounting perspective is you can write off part of a service price that was given away for free as a promotional expense. Um, something that you did for customer service. So what I think in that situation I would have done, provided I had the time to do a new full set. I mean, let's face it. A lot of times people call for a repair. We only book them in for 15 minutes or a half an hour. And that's not enough to repair nine. So in a lot of cases, this client would have been disappointed to find out that, yeah, I'll fix your nails, but I can't do it right now. You're going to have to come back. I need to have an idea of what's really going on when you book a fill appointment. Um, and of course, we say it with a great deal of charm. But I think that what I probably would have done in this case is I probably would have charged her for my lowest price fill, which in my case is $35. Um, but I know that there's different prices for different people. But I probably would have charged her for my lowest price fill and written the other half, the difference between my lowest price fill and my full set price, I probably would have written that other half off as promotional expense. And then we would have spent the next hour talking about what was going on in her life that made her so upset that she needed to pick off nine of her nails. I think in the end, that's going to be the best way to retain your client. They understand that you have expenses to be there and that you're doing the best you can by giving them the best price break you can on the repair, but you can't do it all for free because it's their fault. Um, but so let's talk about why it's your fault. Let's talk about what's going on. Use that as an opportunity to build your relationship with that client, and then you will have a better idea of... Um, how to keep them around a little bit more. You still made a little money. They didn't have to spend quite so much. And now you formed more of a bond with them, which is going to keep them coming back. And they know you did them a favor. They didn't get it done for free. They didn't get to, you know, scam you out of something. Um, the other thing that was talked about, Maisie Dunbar was a guest on Nail Talk Radio last night. Uh, Maisie Dunbar is a fantabulous celebrity manicurist who has done some amazing things with her career. And Maisie talked about what she's got going on and where she's going next. So I think that that is definitely something that you need to check out NTR's podcast stamp on their website. Also, we got to hear the surprise guest that we didn't get to know who it was ahead of time, which is something that um, Othan and Brayden don't generally do, um, is Marnie, and she told a story of her distributorship that, um, and an ownership of a company, she's had quite a, quite a run with this, and so now what she's ended up with is a lot of product that she can't sell. Um, at full price anymore. She just needs to liquidate it. So she did a fantastic giveaway. If nothing else, you need to be listening to NTR because the giveaway stuff every week, great giveaways, totally need to be there. Um, but her huge giveaway was $3,000 worth of Bella Forma colored gel product. Um, plus she announced the special price to be able to buy each one and uh, I know the links to be able to get a hold of her. They gave her email, which is marnie at bellaforma.com. Um, you, but you can find all of that on the NTR Facebook page, web page. Um, that is a fantastic deal that you definitely need to be looking into. So we're going to talk a lot about during the course of this time um, with Nails Over Coffee. Speaking of, I'm feeling the need for Java. There we go. Okay. I expect you guys to have your coffee too. A note about groups on Facebook. If you belong to Facebook nail groups, which please do, there's tons of them. There's great information. You can learn tons of things from industry experts. I have my own that I admin. Um, if you join a group on Facebook, please make sure a couple of things. First of all, your Facebook needs to say that you're a nail tech. Anyway, that's for promotional purposes. That's what you got to have. But some of the groups won't approve you to be a part of the group unless they can see on your Facebook page that you're a working nail tech and or a licensed nail tech. So make sure that's on your page. 
um, so that these people, most of these groups, there's a lot of members, they're not going to track you down and ask if you're licensed or if you're a student. Please make it really clear on your Facebook page. It should be clear on all of your social media, whether you're on LinkedIn, which you should be also, um, Pinterest, Instagram, anything. Please make it clear that you are a nail professional. But if you join a group, the very first thing you need to do is read the pinned post at the top of the page. It will have the rules for the group, and um, that way you can get all the benefit out of the group that you can. So um, one of the groups I follow is uh, Nail Professionals Technical. It has 1,900 members over the globe. Um, there are rules to join. This is a group that is non-brand, non-product specific at all. There is no mention of brand names. There is no reference to brand names. So if you're going to join this group, please do. It is a fantastic group. We talk about a lot of industry general things, but you can't mention brand names. So I was going through the post from this last week or two and if you're going to ask a question about what's the best air filter to use or what's the best product to use for XYZ, this is not the group to ask it in because nobody can tell you what brand they use and why and what they recommend. So they it still ends up speaking in generality. So if you're going to ask questions that re will require a recommendation of some specific products or specific brands, please do it in another group. There's plenty of other groups and you'll stop driving the admins of nail professionals technical nuts. Um, in my group, the nail group, um, I'm a secret group. The only way you can join on the nail group is if somebody adds you who's already a member. I have about 700 members. If you like the University of Nails Facebook page, I will add you to the nail group. It's going to take me a second to figure out technically how to do that, but that is going to be the best way for us to be able to get you added. If you're a member of the nail group, please remember the only way we grow is by you adding members, so please add all of your nail tech friends. So back to nail professionals technical. Um, one of the really top action topics for the last week was um, there's a spray-on nail polish that's being marketed to consumers. And though we couldn't say the brand name on Nail Professionals Technical, I am under no such rules, so I can say that it is Nails Inc. or Nails Incorporated or whatever. I've watched the videos. I've seen the promos for it. Um, it seems to be kind of a gimmicky thing. I'm sure there's going to be some consumers who really love it. Um, it seems kind of weird. You still have to put a base coat down and then you spray over the nails and then you put a top coat on, which is a brush on top coat, but then you just wait, it's like 20 seconds or something, and then you can wash all of what is sprayed on your skin off and just leaving what's on your nails. Now, that's a really nifty idea. We as nail professionals know that no matter how easy you make it sound, yeah, not so much. So this is going to be really interesting to see how consumers played out in it. Um, the technician consensus seemed to be that this is probably going to be one of those consumer things that's a flash in the pan. It's going to come out. It's going to get some publicity. They're going to sell some stuff, and then it's just going to kind of go away. Um, I think it's the same thing that airbrush tanning people dealt with with the Sally Hansen like spray-on airbrush stuff. So I don't think this is going to be one for us to worry about. And the general consensus on nail technicals professional was probably, no professionals technical was that it's probably not going to be a big deal either. Um, what was the, oh, nail artist versus nail tech. Um, there was a great post that went on for a while about what do you call yourself? Do you call yourself a nail artist? Do you call yourself a nail tech? Do you call yourself a manicurist? Um, and what are kind of the rules, the guidelines by which we talk about this? So there was a lot of discussion about, well, I tend to do more art, so I call myself a nail artist. Um, there was people such as myself who I tend to do a lot more artificial nail work. Um, and a lot of what I do is really technical. I do some specialty pedicure stuff. So I tend to call myself a nail technician. Um People who do natural nail care only, manicures and pedicures, um, call themselves uh, manicurists. 
um, or natural nail specialists. I think all of these are great. Um, it also led into a discussion of are we focusing too much on art because of all the trends right now that, and not worrying as much about the technical aspect of what we do. I think there is definitely um, some truth to that. So the general consensus from all of the texts on the posts were learn your foundations first, learn your technical first, get some basic art stuff down, and then really go into the nail artistry part. Um, and also there was a lively discussion. This was a good one. Um, this got a lot of comments. Uh, Victoria brought up a point of about putting glitter or additives and those kind of things in the inhibition layer of a gel or a gel polish. And could that potentially lead to overexposure? And so we had to get some scientists in, we had to get Doug Shoon in. Um, I think uh, Jim from Light Elegance popped in for a minute, uh, or maybe Jim Nordstrom popped in. I don't, there's, the scientists kind of got in on it. And the general consensus was that you're pressing it into the inhibition layer, as I hope we all know by now, is basically uncured product because it's product that can't cure because it's in the presence of oxygen. And so it stays sticky. So we can add other things into it. And then we're pressing our product in, but there's the concern that then we put another coat in over the top, we cure it, and now we left this stuff inside that's not cured. And the agreement was that it should end up curing because once we cover it with another coat, it is now no longer exposed to oxygen, so it should cure more. Some of the darker pigments and such, we've talked about they still don't really cure, um, and that the Exposure risk is minimal because we do have fully properly cured product underneath. We do have properly cured product on top. And so um, as long as you're not drilling it off, as long as you're soaking it off, drilling that leads then to some overexposure issues. But if you're removing it with soak off and you're using gloves and everything, there shouldn't be too much of an overexposure risk. So um, it was definitely a lively conversation that still continues. So if you're part of that site and you get a chance it's to um, get a few minutes to pop on, I would definitely pop on to Nail Professionals Technical and check out that post because there was definitely some more scientifically detailed things on there. Um, okay, so more coffee. Nails over coffee. This is boring. I'm going to have to find some music or something to play while I'm doing this. I feel like it's very... And I'm not really quiet. Um, okay, so another group, the Canadian Nail Tech Connection. Uh, Dana has done a fantastic job with organizing all of these networking events all across the um, all across the country. And by the way, people who are watching live, I do have the chat on, so I can actually see if you chat. So uh, I'm busy, so I can't respond. But I can actually see if you chat and I can see any questions you might have or comments. So feel free to chime in if you're watching live. Um, so this is a great group, great networking events across Canada. The group is fantastic to watch. There was a very interesting question posed yesterday about an unhappy client who got a full set, refused to pay um, because she said that she was not the nail tech for her. And so there was a comment, uh, there were some comments posted. This was a great post, some great information, basically talking about, yes, she absolutely needs to pay uh, for something. Sounds like she was just trying to get a full set for free. Um, I think that's entirely possible. Um, I think from a customer service standpoint, we're back to that. If you know your accounting and you know how your accounting works, uh, I think that there probably could have been a middle ground um, achieved with this person. I have actually dealt with this situation in the past. It's totally okay to say, hey, I get it. I'm not the nail tech for you. It Maybe it doesn't work for everybody, but um, this is my job and I do have to get paid for my product and for my time. So again, let's split the difference. I'm going to go ahead. The best special I've ran in the last year is 50% off a full set. So what I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to run that as a special 50% off your full set. 
my full set prices uh, start out at 80 so in my case uh, I would have said okay so we're I'm gonna charge you 40 um, and I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about why I'm not the nail tech for you and maybe we I can refer you to somebody who is so you don't have to just keep kind of shooting in the dark I think that's probably how I would have handled it um, I don't think we ever get to go into a situation and just there's no charge I know that happens in a restaurant sometimes when the food isn't great or the service isn't great but I think there's a difference between going into a restaurant and saying yeah the meal was fine but it really just wasn't my stop my taste and the restaurant really isn't my style and so I really don't want to pay I think that most restaurants would go well you sort of have to pay something because you're probably not coming back and that's fine but we do have a business to run here so I think you know that and that was but pretty much everybody's summation was that yeah she should have been made to pay you don't get to, if she didn't pay she gets treated like a walkout um, it's a real gray area I think that utilizing that um, half price and putting the rest into a write-off in your promotional expense you're still getting to write off that discount so I think that that might have been a better idea in that case but that definitely garnered a lot of hey we need to make sure we're letting our clients know that it's our job it's not charity we're not here for free um, okay um, there's a couple of things the nail team in the United Kingdom is Gemma's site for her business What's amazing about the nail team is there is 20, nearly 24,000 members, which means there is some amazing stuff that comes up on this site. Um, lots of business questions come up on the nail team site. Great art, great tutorials. Um, Gemma's uh, YouTube channel has some phenomenal tutorials for some great art so if you're looking for some art to practice looking for some things to go she keeps getting voted by scratch magazine as like the amazing nail tech ever and she is she does phenomenal work and she's a great girl um but there's some great nail art on there um there's some great tutorials and there's some great business questions that get asked again please read the pin post please respect that this is Gemma's personal business site so there are certain rules that she has that you need to adhere to it's nice enough that she just allows it to be a whole big forum so um, please check out the nail team in the UK she just had a lot of great art up this week and there were some great questions um, about how to charge for your you know how much you should pay for booth rent and those kind of questions that we see over and over again so um, it's 1225 now and I'm going to take a second to uh, talk about the University of Nails. I've mentioned the University of Nails a couple of times and I really want you guys to, so a lot of these groups we, we follow and we talk about, we look at and we say, man, I don't know if I, I'm paying $100 a week for my station rent, is that too much? Or is the industry going to such a place that we can't have nail techs who are employees anymore everybody wants to booth rent and how do you handle that and all of those things there is a lot of business questions that are being promoted right now now recently I graduated from the University of Washington with my bachelor's degree in marketing I'm eventually going to go back and get my master's in business administration but I learned so many things about how all the other industries that we don't know anything about because we're busy doing nails let's face it that's what we do and Maisie um, talked about that a little bit on her NTR show about how a lot of nail techs are doing a lot of great work but they don't necessarily know the business of what they do so it's for that reason that I am developing an education platform I'm actually recording all this week uh, called the University of Nails and it's gonna have a mascot which I'm gonna run a contest later for you guys all to name and it's gonna be treated a lot like a university uh, with some great fun things going on as it builds but it's going to be a video and education library that's membership based for ten dollars a month because not all of us can get to the networking events not all of us can get to the shows there's a lot of money for that 
um, to get to classes. We all should get to classes. It fires you up and it gets you going again. But not everybody can afford it. Not all the time. I know I can't. I've been there. Um, I would have loved to have gone to the Northwest uh, Nail Tech Retreat, which takes place right down the street from my house. This year couldn't go. Got to go last year. It was fantastic. But I can't, you know, we can't always get to go. Sometimes we have to make other decisions with our business. Well, what I learned in my marketing degree is I learned how the big companies, Revlon and Procter & Gamble and Walmart and banks and just everything, how these businesses run their businesses, how they market, how the accounting works, how finance works. And what that has done is given me a very unique perspective from having been in nail tech for 19 years. I don't want anybody who hasn't sat behind the other side of a table who has never listened to their voicemail while they are trying to take a pee break to try and return clients thing while they're eating a granola bar because they're booked for 10 hours that day. Don't tell me what nail techs need. Don't tell me what nail techs do unless you've actually done that. And so I think that I've done that. I've been there. I've owned a salon. I've been an employee. I've been a manufacturer educator. Um, and now I've got this college degree and I want to share all of this information with you guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through from a marketing standpoint, what marketing actually is, which I think most people just think of it as advertising and it's so much more than that, to teaching you guys how to develop a business plan. Um, there's just so, I'm going to give you the business information that goes along with that. So um, I sat down this summer and had a great talk with Tammy Taylor about um, this was something the industry really needed. And so this is kind of my latest project that we're going to do. And we're going to give it a whole brand. We're going to be the University of Nails, man. I'm so tired of people saying, oh, you're a nail tech. Oh, but you went to college. That's great. And it's like, yeah, I went to college and I've got a lot of student loan debt and not everybody can take the time to go to college and not everybody can learn all these things. So my goal is to, with nothing to sell you, no products, it's not going to be product specific or any of that kind of stuff. It's not going to be corporate sponsor. It's not going to be anything, which is why I have to charge a membership fee. But the amount of education that you are going to get for $10 a month is going to just be so much more than doing nothing. It's going to increase your profits. It's going to increase your revenue. And so that's my pet project that I'm working on right now. Uh, so you'll hear me reference University of Nails. It has a Facebook page that's up. Um, please check it out, business page, so please check it out and go like it so you can be in the know. I can also get you hooked up to the nail group, hopefully that way. And um, so I think that for our first um, episode, that's what I'm going to leave you with for today. These episodes are going to be, the broadcasts are going to be sometime, somewhere between a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour. Um, just kind of depending on what's going on. I think we were pretty dominated with world events this week. So I'm going to go ahead and give that the piece that it deserves. Um, and uh, head out until tomorrow. I'm going to be here weekdays at noon Pacific time, Monday through Friday. Uh, I'm going to, you know, catch up on everything. And if you belong to the University of Nails, once I go live on the platform, that is where all of these shows will be archived. And I'm also going to put this on my Facebook page. So uh, you can check me out on Facebook at the University of Nails. You can check me out on my YouTube channel, which I'm Nail Girl 920 uh, under the name Michelle Cordes. I got married, so I'm Michelle Cordes Pew um, for the purpose of business. And you can find me on Instagram. I'm Nail Girl 920. And on Pinterest, I'm Michelle Cordes too. Uh, you know, LinkedIn, I'm um, still as Michelle Cordes. I'm not sure if I've added the Pew to it yet. Um, it's a work in progress. Anybody who's been married gets that. And, um, so yeah, just social media, you got to be all in. And then this is on Periscope. If you're watching it on another platform, um, go ahead, grab the Periscope app. It's really kind of easy and cool to use. It links up with your Twitter and you can follow me on Twitter, nail girl M Cordis. And you know, we'll just, uh, we're just going to get this done. 
as I told Athena the other day, going rogue. I'm going to totally do this without any corporate sponsorship or anything. So just going to be a nail tech. It's a little old nail tech. Uh, teaching you guys some stuff about how to run a business and what's going on in the nail world. So uh, I'd like to thank those of you who joined me today. And I will see you tomorrow at noon with a different Disney cup. And uh, we'll see you then. Thanks.